abri, abri, ab, uh, it, it's bad, folks. <laughs> oh, God. Where do I even begin with this movie? So, let's start with the plot. LeBron James, biggest basketball star in the world, millions of followers and fans everywhere. He gets targeted by an artificial intelligence called Al G. Rhythm, played by Don Cheadle. Kidnaps LeBron's son, Dom, and challenges him to a basketball game to win him back. But his primary motivation for doing all of this is because he wants to be as popular, if not more popular, than LeBron James. And the only way he knows how to do that is to showcase this basketball game in front of all of LeBron's followers and fans. But the first question you're probably asking yourself is, why would an artificial intelligence need to be popular? Well, that's a good question. Apparently this artificial intelligence has complete control over the entire serververse where it resides at Warner Brothers Studios. And this movie really isn't even about basketball. It's basically a two hour showcase of all the famous Warner Brothers properties throughout its entire history. This movie ran way too long. It clocks in at just under two hours. This movie should have been an hour 30 max, including end credits. Big surprise, at the end of the movie, there's a big basketball game, which is the climax of the movie. It went on way too long. There's a part of the movie where LeBron James is animated. He's a cartoon, just like the Looney Tunes are animated. That didn't need to happen at all. There was no reason for it. When LeBron gets sucked into this vortex and he ends up in Toontown, he turns into a cartoon, but when they leave the planet, when they leave that location to go find the other Looney Tunes, he remains a cartoon when he didn't need to be. The movie just doesn't make a lot of logical sense. I can't believe I'm actually arguing for the part of this movie to make any kind of logical sense because it's a Looney Tunes movie. Why would you care about things being logical in it? But really, there's so much stuff that's just randomly jam-packed in this movie that you just stop caring about what's going on on screen. As for LeBron James' performance in the movie, it's just... It's very one note. But by far, the biggest problem with this movie is that it's just not funny. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I laughed, well, not really laughed, I kind of chuckled a little bit, I think maybe twice during the movie. The first time towards the beginning when there was like a Star Trek reference, and then the second time was kind of towards the end where you think this really important person is going to make a cameo appearance and it turns out to be someone else. That got another little chuckle out of me, but for the most part, the movie is just a flat line. There's really nothing funny or amusing about it. The jokes just land flat. That's the shocking thing about this movie. It's just not funny. The only audience that I see finding this movie mildly entertaining would be Anyone under the age of eight. If you're over the age of eight, this movie is going to be dull, boring, and uninspired. This movie doesn't have any charm to it. It's not really fun. I think Don Cheadle's performance is fine, given the material that he had to work with. He was just kind of yucking it up the whole time. But really, this movie is just... Ugh. It was painful to watch at times. If I were to look for any positives in the movie, it would be that it had good special effects, I guess. <laughs> but special effects really aren't anything that movies can get wrong nowadays. Movies need to make sure that they have a good plot to work with, and this movie needed a major retooling and reworking. This movie is just one massive airball. I'm going to give Space Jam a new legacy of 4 out of 10. Thank you for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. Be sure to give the video a quick like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.